So what's the better way to do this? So the better way to do this is Mon called Monte Carlo. So Monte Carlo is a very sophisticated statistical technique which uses the idea of repeatedly sampling historical data um, to create the full probability distribution. So you will now know the exact probability that cost, time, and budget will be on schedule and you'll understand everything about the entire distribution. So you'll know the probability that you'll release on any particular date you'll know the probability that the budget will be ahead by 5% or 10% or 20% or behind. Um, you'll know what the chances are of releasing between two dates. You'll know what the chances are that the full scope will be completed by a certain date. Right? So it's a much more powerful approach. It's much more sophisticated and therefore it's much harder. So there are no standard agile tools that do this. And so when I do it, on, in simple cases, I use an Excel spreadsheet and I program it in a particular way. And when it's more sophisticated, I actually have to write code. Okay. So much more powerful, um, but much harder. So I'll give you some examples here. So the key thing that we're doing here is improving decision making. So when we give executives bad information, right, they make bad decisions, they make bad trade-off decisions. And so I recently published an article in Forbes talking about decision-making strategies in Agile. And so as you move beyond the team level, Agile is largely about improving decision-making. So what do executives do the entire day? They make decisions. And so if we as Agile coaches, as project managers, are providing bad information, right, like we do an average case analysis and we have no understanding of the variance, for example, then they're going to make bad decisions and we're going to have bad results, right? So Monte Carlo gives everyone better decisions because they have better information, more accurate and more precise information, right? So that's the end game and that's the great value of Monte Carlo planning. So here's a very, very simple example. So in this case, we're going to model a team that has a velocity of 100 plus or minus 20 points. Okay? So they range in velocity between 80 and 100. And we want to know what their average velocity will be over six sprints. So they have two-week sprints. So two-week sprints, six iterations means a 12-week release, which is pretty standard, a quarterly release at some companies. Okay? And so the average case approach will say, we have 100 points per sprint, so we're going to be done with six, 600 points after those six sprints. But of course, since the velocity is varying between 80 and 120, that's not always going to be true. In fact, approximately 50% of the time, we're going to finish fewer than 600 points in that sprint. And the question is, how bad can it get? And so what Monte Carlo in this particular situation shows is that there is a 10% chance that we will be 8% below. And so here's how you read this chart. So this chart says here over in 92, that two out of 20 examples result in an average velocity of 92. So two out of 20 is 10%. That's how we get the probability of 10%. And of course, uh, 92 is 8% less than 100. So now we go to the product owner and say, you realize that in this release, there's a decent chance, there's a 10% chance that we're going to miss scope by 8%. So the bottom of your backlog the bottom 8% of your backlog is not going to get done. What do you think about that? And so the product owner might say that's a disaster or a stakeholder might say that's a disaster, in which case we need to make a change. Or the product owner may actually say that's totally fine and we'll still release, in which case we now know that the bottom 8% of the backlog is optional, in which case we could release as soon as we're done even if we're hitting a velocity of 100, which means that we could release earlier because what we've discovered through this conversation is that the bottom 8% of the backlog is not actually necessary. And so notice that this is not a conversation that could take place using the standard approach because the standard approach simply says six iterations, 100 points per iteration, you're gonna be done with 600 points. So you don't discover this critical fact. And that's just for a single team. And things become much more interesting and much more complicated 
when you have multiple teams. So let's do a couple of examples. So here we have two parallel teams. And the two parallel teams also have a velocity of 100 plus or minus 20. And both teams need to complete 600 points for the release to take place, right? So 100 times 6 is 600 points. Like the standard approach would say, we're going to finish 600 points. And so to release, both of them have to be on schedule. And what Monte Carlo shows here is that there's actually a 60% chance that the schedule will be missed. Okay? So if you look at this scatter chart, what we're doing is we're plotting the results of the Monte Carlo for team one and team two. So on the x-axis, we have how many points team one actually completes. And you see that it's mostly centered around 600, which is the average, but sometimes they're below and sometimes they're above. Now, whenever this team is below 600, that means that we missed the release, right? So that's this cut line, right? To the right of it, we hit the release, and to the left of it, we don't. And the same thing goes with team two, right? So team two, again, its velocity is averaged around 600, but sometimes it's above and sometimes it's below. So the only time that we are actually able to release is when we're in this upper right-hand quadrant. Right? And if we count the number of points, the number of situations, there are only 8 out of 20. So there's only a 40% chance that we'll hit the schedule, and there's a 60% chance that we won't hit the schedule. So this starts demonstrating the problems with the standard approach. Right, The standard approach would say we're going to complete 600 points on both teams, and we're going to be on schedule, when in fact, there's a 60% chance that the schedule will be missed. And What's really cool about Monte Carlo is that we know this on day one. We know this before the project starts. So we can actually make a much better decision about whether or not this is something that we want to invest in or not. So we will stop projects that are going to fail a lot more quickly using the Monte Carlo approach. Right? Using the standard approach, you'd basically have to watch for the situation to unfold you'd have to wait for several iterations and then see that the team is not actually finishing 100 story points per sprint and then make the decision. So you spend a lot of money before you can actually finish up the project or cancel the project or make some major strategic decision about how the project will go. Now, two parallel teams shows the power of Monte Carlo, but of course the typical situation is actually much more sophisticated. And I've done simulations with 50 plus teams that lead to completely counterintuitive results. So I'll just give you an example of something that's a little bit more complicated, just to give you some sense of the power of the Monte Carlo technique. So here's a typical situation at a company that's transitioning to Agile, right? So they have a little bit of waterfall still, and they have a development team, say a scrum team, that's running along and doing sprints, but at the end of it, they have sort of a different phase that's called business acceptance. So the development team drops some code into a particular um, area, and then the business sort of pounds on it and sees if they actually want to release, okay? So this is quite standard, and this is a pretty simple situation, just two teams, and both teams have to be ready and get through business acceptance before release. Uh, once again, we have a velocity of 100 plus or minus 20. One piece of good news is that we've learned from the previous simulation that we are not going to finish 600 points very often. So this time we only need to finish 575 points. So if we're below our average velocity, that's okay. And business acceptance finishes within one week with a 95% probability and within two weeks with 100% probability. So this is a planned 13 week effort. So we'll do six iterations as we did previously. And then we'll spend one week in business acceptance, okay? And the question here is, when will we know that the project is late? Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to compare the Monte Carlo approach with standard approaches. Okay. So what you'll typically do in a standard approach is that you'll make some assumption about what the future velocity will be. And then you'll base your estimate about whether or not you're late based on that assumption. So under the best case assumption, We'll finish, say, sprint one, and we'll be a little bit behind, but then we'll say, look, guys, we can go from 80 to 120 points per sprint, and we're going to make the best case assumption that we're going to hit 120 points every sprint. And then you ask, are we going to be late? And if you are going to be late, you report it, and if you're not, you say, we're green. The average case assumption is that our projected velocity will be 100 points, right? 
And the worst case assumption is that we're going to project the velocity to be 95 points. So the question we're asking is, which of these assumptions will be sort of like Monte Carlo, right? Which one will tell us that we have some risk of failure, right? And we'll compare the Monte Carlo results to each of these assumptions. So let me start off by asking the question, right? You guys have this situation, right? Two teams, they have an average velocity of 100, but it could be as low as 80, as high as 120. They have to finish 575 points, and they have to go through this business acceptance. What do you think the chances are that this entire project is going to release on schedule in 13 weeks? So just go ahead and type in your answer in the chat. What's the percentage chance? So I'm looking for a number like, you know, 85% or 5% or 23%. What does your intuition say about the likelihood that this project is going to finish on scope and on schedule? So go ahead and type in your percentage into the chat box. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that this situation is a challenging enough situation that it's hard to get an answer, right? So let's look at what the data shows. So on the next sheet, what we have is what the best case, average case, and worst case assumptions will tell us. So the right answer here is at the right-hand side. So in this situation, there's a 45% chance that this project will finish on time. So you can just see from that answer that the standard planning approach is never going to give you that answer, right? The standard planning approach doesn't produce a probability of success. But what this chart also shows is that if you use, you know, standard agile techniques, standard project planning techniques, and you look at best case, average case, and worst case, all of those approaches are way off the right answer until you're well into the project and you've spent a lot of money on something that is likely to fail. So if we look at the best case and you run the best case assumption after iteration one, iteration two, iteration three, iteration four, it's telling you that there's a 100% chance that the project will finish on time. So that's the blue line. In iteration five, it drops to 90%, but it isn't until iteration six that we get down to 50%, right? Somewhere close to the actual answer of 45%. So that's a terrible result, right? Iteration six is 12 weeks into a 13-week project, and so understanding that a project is going to be late 12 weeks into a 13-week project is not any good. But how about the average case? So the average case is a little bit better. It's still telling us that after iteration two, there's a 100% chance that we're gonna finish on time. So that's four weeks into a 13-week project. I'm looking at the red line. And then finally, in iteration three, it plunges down to 65%. So after iteration three, that's six weeks into a 13-week project. So that's better than the best case, right? But still, we're six weeks into a 13-week project before we discover that there's a significant risk. And so we say, look, you know, clearly the best case is nutty. No one's going to assume the best case. And if we say the average case, right, sometimes we want to be a little bit pessimistic. We want to be a little bit conservative. So we're going to do the worst case. So the worst case is just that we're going to perform at 95 points per sprint, which is just slightly under our average of 100. But what happens there? What happens there is that the worst case actually grossly underestimates the probability of success. So it starts off by saying that we have a 25% chance of success after iteration one. It goes down to 15%. So what that would mean is since the actual answer is 45%, is that you would be very, very likely to actually cancel the project or make a major strategic change if you make the worst case assumption. So the bottom line here is that the results are not intuitive and there is no simple way to approximate the Monte Carlo results using the straight line standard assumption of a certain number of points per sprint. And so of course what Monte Carlo does is that it gives you the actual answer of 45% before you even start the project. So over here on the left side of the chart, you would actually have 45%. So you would know the exact percentage at the very start of the project. So when I say that Monte Carlo gives you radically better 
information so you can make better decisions, this is a great illustration. You know, you have best case and average case telling you it's 100% likely at the beginning. You have worst case telling you it's 25% when the actual answer is 45%. So here's the final uh, uh, word on Monte Carlo. So it's a great uh, approach. And the big disadvantage is that it is technically sophisticated and difficult to do. So very few Agile coaches are familiar with it. The second challenge is that uh, communicating the results to the executives requires some education, right? Executives are not accustomed to looking at probability distributions. And so typically you'll need to simplify it and say something like there's a 95% chance that we'll release by the state. Now, if you want to do something that's sort of in between the standard approach and the Monte Carlo approach, always use ranges. So don't ask, when will this be finished or how much it will cost? Ask, what is the range, the low range and the high range? And what that does is that it captures the variance. Okay? Another thing that you can do here is you can actually have two groups provide an estimate. And so the difference between those two groups will also give you a sense of the variance, okay? But it's absolutely essential to do this. As long as you're working with a single number, like the average case, you are completely wiping away variance. You're saying that there is no risk, okay? So what the Monte Carlo approach does is that it builds in risk and does a phenomenal job of capturing risk from the start. And that's essential in making good decisions. But if you want to do something like a poor man's version of that, use ranges. 